15 our access advisory committee meeting of Friday, February 12, 2021. Roll call. James Marston. Here. Robert Burr. Here. Nick Coons. Here. Michael Ressler. Here. Barbara Silver. Here. Suzanne Tejada. Here. Council person, council member Megan Harmon. Here. Brian Demore. Here. Michelle Pay. Here. Norma Cervantes. Here. Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. I want to uh, bring two things to attention. First of all, uh, Sean Gurrell, our former member, did not reapply, so uh, he's not here anymore. And I asked Sarita to, to prepare a certificate of appreciation for him. And I would also like to us to inter, uh, welcome our new member, Michael Ressler. And Michael, if you would like to give a few words about yourself and uh, your interest, we'd be glad to hear from you. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my interests are in the, the industry and our community. Um, in particular, uh, here at Hillside, uh, I think most of you probably know, but we work with uh, 59 residents uh, who have a variety of intellectual and developmental disabilities, as well as, in most cases, fairly severe underlying medical conditions. Other than, uh, you know, during this COVID period, they are generally uh, out in the community at a variety of uh, day programs and activities or, uh, you know, learning or volunteering. And, uh, you know, access is a critical issue uh, for each and every one of them, certainly for their families. Um, prior to coming to uh, Hillside as their new president and CEO, for the last... Uh, 11 years, I was the uh, CEO of the Jewish Federation for Greater Santa Barbara and uh, have served as an executive director in that uh, industry for the last 25 plus years of my 35 years uh, you know, working in the uh, Jewish communal field. And having built a, a couple of uh, community centers, done a lot of work at the Bronfman Family JCC down on Chapala here in Santa Barbara, you know, issues of, of access and compliance are, are critical. Uh, and I know that from our uh, clientele. I know that from the community. I know that from uh, meetings and, and learning and education I've participated in. And the opportunity to uh, help the city uh, and help our community uh, understand and, and actually address uh, some of the issues that you know, we're, we're aware of and new ones that we've never even thought could occur but will. Uh, to be a part of that process to me is, uh, you know, something I, I value and, uh, you know, feel honored uh, to engage with all of you. So, uh, you know, thank you for uh, having me join you. I'm looking forward to, to learning a lot and uh, hopefully uh, you know, being able to contribute in a constructive, positive way. Thank you. Thank you very much for that great introduction. I have one question for you. You said you had, uh, I think, 59 residents or people. Yes. Uh, just roughly, how much? What percentage are in wheelchairs or have other physical limitations on access? Eighty-four percent in our last census are uh, non-ambulatory and okay. in, in wheelchairs okay. or worse. And, okay. Uh, okay. You know, and and there are other, you know, even those that are ambulatory, um, you know, have issues of of access, uh, you know, that that may be other than being able to walk into a place. Uh, whether it's um, being able to read or hear uh, a presentation or understand what's being asked of them or how to apply uh, you know, for different um, programs or services they are entitled to. Uh, you know, th those are also you know, obviously forms of access that our residents struggle with you know, beyond you know, the, the obvious uh, access uh, obstructions that exist when you're you know, in a wheelchair or walker or something like that. Okay, thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, the next item is committee member reports and staff announcements. 
So I have a few things I'd like to uh, thank people for. Uh, I just heard today that the, the Council State Street Committee wants to form a group to uh, address the future of State Street. And it was mentioned they would like to have a representative from the AAC. And since we don't meet for another three months, I'm asking Brian how we can get somebody to this position. I, my suggestion might be that Brian could check and see what the requirements are. And uh, we could have an email discussion on who would like to join that group. It seems like it's be a long uh, range group, but you have a whole, this is all not just for dining. This is how the whole re-envisioning of, of State Street. So Brian, could you maybe follow through with uh, I think it was brought up by downtown parking. Jim, 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 yeah. Jim, can I interrupt you? Sure. Because Megan is here and she's on that committee, perhaps she could help us out at this point in time and we not have to put it off. That's yeah. a very good comment, Barbara. Thank you. Megan, could you please uh, tell us about that? Sure. Yeah. So um, I think it's a little bit premature to um, talk about appointing someone, but we did have the conversation as the state suit subcommittee, you know, that was phase one going into phase two, we'll have um, a bigger committee that will actually really sort start to dig in on some of the technical questions, um, talk about capital projects, look at specific streets. I mean, really do the hard work of, um, kind of defining the project. So I brought up at our State Street subcommittee that I would like to see a member of, of this committee on that subcommittee. Um, so that the, the composition of that subcommittee, its role, that has to go to the full council still for their approval. So technically we're just at a phase where the State Street subcommittee has recommended that we put together a broader State Street um, design committee that includes um, a member from this committee, various other representatives from committees across um, across our city and various stakeholders, but that still has to go to the full council for approval. Once the full council approves it, and I do anticipate, um, or hope, I guess is maybe a better word, that they will do so, then um, it'll come back to you guys with more information first about when those meetings will be, how often they will be, um, and at that point, I think it makes good sense uh, for you all to discuss who to appoint. Um, but at, at, at this stage, we still don't have full council approval. So I think it's just something to keep your eye on and know that it's likely coming. Um, it's coming in the future. But I, I can't tell you right now any of the specifics because council hasn't heard it and hasn't voted on it yet. OK, thank you very much. Like I said, my real concern is if we don't meet for another three months, we might not be uh able right. to get in but anyway we can work that out later so megan can you let us know as soon as you find out that it's been approved and we should start discussing uh who's going to be the representative would that be okay absolutely yeah absolutely right. i don't Thank have you. the date i anticipate it'll be um sometime in march that that item comes to council but i will make sure that i let you guys know both um, in advance of that date in case you want to watch the council hearing and then um afterwards how the vote goes so that you know, you know, maybe there's a special meeting that's called to appoint the representative or, you know, I can. OK, that would be help. wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Of course, we'll do. Okay. I wanna, uh, this is Nick Kuntz. I just want to jump in and, and thank uh, whoever suggested that uh, someone from this committee be involved. Uh, that's a sign of progress. I'm, I'm happy to hear it. I, I wonder if there's anything we can do to facilitate not needing a special meeting to appoint someone um, if we uh, maybe gave that responsibility to a subcommittee that already exists that might ease the process moving forward Nick are you suggesting that we have a committee now to start talking about it or wait until uh, Megan gets back to us with more details I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure i'm suggesting that since we already have a number of subcommittees and maybe the the parklet subcommittee would be the ideal fit for this responsibility this task uh that we we uh, agree today that the subcommittee will 
work on uh, appointing someone to this new committee so we don't have to call a special meeting or wait till the the june meeting to to figure that out well i think that's a good idea too i thought the park committee could be there so why don't we just have a meeting of the park committee later and we can <laughs> talk about that okay i think that's a good idea all right Thank i kind you. of feel like we need some sort of um uh consensus today to give that responsibility to the parklet committee committee but um i don't know well I, I thought that i just kind of said i think that's a good idea to do so do we have yeah. to have a vote is what you're saying i don't know i don't okay. know i guess i'm looking i'm looking to staff for some clarity there so that okay. we don't end up uh okay. you know being told later no we can't do that because we didn't follow procedure today <laughs> Okay. Well, Brian, I guess that's you. Do you have a problem with us meeting offline as a subcommittee to just talk about this position? Do you have any problem with that? I think that would work fine. The timing should be good. Uh, we're going to have a reason to want to convene that subcommittee uh, soon anyway. So. Okay. All right. Thanks. And uh, I was going to bring this up later, but I might as well now. We have an opening on that committee. Right now, it's just... Uh, Suzanne and myself. So uh, we have a place for a member to say they would like to be involved in Parklet Outdoor Dining Committee, which now may be extended to this other uh, long term. So uh, is, is there anyone now that would like to uh, volunteer for that committee? Well, Mike, I know that you're new, but you have a lot of familiarity with downtown and perhaps would be a strong member for this committee, um, if you would consider it. I agree with that. I was hoping to hear from Mike. Yeah, I always get the new guy. I know how this works. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I, I would just like to know a little bit more about the subcommittee and what they've already uh, been engaged in if there are you know, minutes or notes from the past couple meetings I'm happy to take a look at them over the weekend and yeah I, I, I'm interested and I'd be you know depending on the time commitment you know be uh, you know be happy to take that open position but I I think I just need a little know a little bit more about what's already gone into that process uh, you know to be as effective as I can be with you guys with you and Mike, Susan. Jim, is, Jim Mike, this is Bob. Jim, this is Bob. I think if Michael hasn't been sent the uh, Parklet guidelines that we received, um, perhaps send him those. That would really bring him up to speed as far as you know, what we're looking at as a, a working document. I, I well, did there, receive that and, and yeah. read that last week uh, in preparation of today's meeting and you know one Good. of the agenda items. So you know, thank you. I, I just didn't know if there were minutes from the subcommittee meetings uh, themselves, you know, previously, but. We do not have meetings, Michael. I'd be glad to talk to you offline about what we've done. Mostly, mostly we met with different people from Public Works trying to get them to uh, get their work done correctly. So we have no meeting uh, minutes, but I would okay. be glad to have a phone call with you later, okay? Uh, happy to, and uh, you know, if you need a commitment now to move this forward, I'm in. Uh, happy okay. to join that subcommittee. Thank you. And you can also, <laughs> you can also Sorry. quit it if you don't like it. <laughs> And this, this is Suzanne. Um, I'm also happy to be on that call if we can do a three-way call so we can all talk. So that sounds yeah. great, Suzanne. Thank you. Okay. okay. <laughs> now another thing I want to bring up. This is a thanks to Brian. Uh, when the MTD did renovations, they didn't put any tactile warnings to delineate the uh, in and out driveways of, of the bus depot, and so I brought that to. Uh, Brian's attention and we also, uh, Bob brought that to MTD and they both got together and put in the tactile domes there. So now people walking down Chapala are aware that they're crossing a very busy driveway. So thanks, yes, thank for you. That. thanks for that. And uh, also a couple of uh, last week, I was told by a few people there was a big sidewalk closure. I think on Sola was it? Uh, and there was no warning signs at the end of the sidewalk, so people would walk halfway down the block and then find out they had to cross the street over a curb. And anyway, Brian also uh, talked to them. That was a private contractor who, who didn't have the proper signage, so I want to thank Brian for getting that taken care of. And I think he's going to mention it also in his, in his staff report today. 
Hey, Jim, uh, I yeah. just quickly, I noticed that's still problematic. There's no signs at the end of uh, the streets? It's not on the State Street side. It's it's mid-block where there's no way to, to um, re-navigate. Okay, well. That was, case, that was the case uh, Wednesday when I audited the parklets. I was went through there yesterday and it did appear to be fully open. The sidewalk is complete. Uh, but that is unfortunate if there was still any type of closure earlier in the week because we had talked to them uh, a week or two ago at this point. Okay. Jim, what Thank was you. the what, what was the specific location? The Sola where? It was between State and Anacapa. Right, right yeah, in the south, middle of the on, block. On the south on, side. On the south side, thank you. Okay. And so you walked half, halfway down, then you saw a sign that says there's a construction here. <laughs> then you had to cross the street uh, with no signal. But the sign should be at the end of the block so that people know the sidewalk is closed someplace. Okay. Right. All right. And then a quick update on the go to webinar. Uh, Sarita did send out uh, some information on that. So I'll just say that. Uh, There are some shortcuts for those who have a problem with using GoToWebinar, but I still have a problem with, we still don't have any toll-free number to call. And you have to first call into the website to be able to use the telephone. And then the telephone is, is a toll call. So that's very inconvenient. If a person can't, doesn't have uh, access to the internet, they can't even get a phone call. The county has a, a local phone number you can call, but somehow, Santa Barbara still has you pay for a toll call. So uh, that's all for the that update. Jim, if I could ask Brian, I know we discussed this six months ago, and I'm wondering, um, Brian, if, if not you, um, who, who in the city is, um, who do we talk to um, to try to advocate to get this going to get a local phone number because like jim said the county has one and there's no reason why the city should not have a local number as well yeah um i had seen i'm trying to pull it up right now um, but there was an email earlier in the week that seemed to indicate that it wasn't possible to get a local number so i don't know if the county is on a different platform if they're using the same platform then uh we'd like to talk to folks over there to figure out how they were able to do that uh, when we checked in with uh, the providers of the platform they said that it was not possible to do that so it could be a different platform then yeah it could be but the, the problem is we don't have to have it on the platform you should still have a phone number that people can call in without going to a computer and listen to the meeting and give suggestions it doesn't have to be through go to webinar but let's check into that Brian, can or, you ask or, to... or if, if it's not possible then this is not the right plat <clears throat> platform for us because that if it's not accessible in that way, then that is a big problem. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is Nick Coons. Um, I'd like to ask, is there someone designated at this time to help troubleshoot accessible accommodations uh, on in real time for, for meetings? Do you mean using the, the platform we have now? Yes. Like so, any any city meeting, whether it's a city council meeting or one of these subcommittee meetings, is there someone? Uh oh, is there someone who is designated by the city staff member who can be contacted to help troubleshoot and accommodate? Um, these kinds of situations and and um if not can we appoint one and can we make a plan to get that information included in every uh meeting notice because we know we know who to talk to because we're involved in this 
Right. But the general public is is use the uh, analogy flying blind, um, trying to trying to figure out how to get involved, and it's That's not right. Good suggestion, Nick. Vince, Vince Wong has been very helpful with that. I I think yes, the yeah. the idea would be to make sure that it's okay with Vince and have his name and number on our agendas, saying call this one if you have any problem with access. Is that what you're looking for, Nick? To have a something, a direct line to like that. Oh, yeah, okay. something exactly like that, and you know, and and maybe he's the person who can be res somebody else. Now, the same person or somebody should become be responsible for getting this phone number and implementing it so that you know the the idea is that the, if we get that in place it'll help reduce the support calls to Vince Wong or whoever it is we we yes. uh, task with that okay. um, because at this rate when we're only having quarter quarterly meetings we're you know we've been talking about this for a year now basically a year's worth of meetings we've been talking about this problem and there's very little that's that's been done to accommodate accessibility in these meetings. And I don't see them going away when with COVID. I, I think that many municipalities, including our own, are heavily invested in this remote technology. And I think that this is the, the future. Um, I sure hope it is. It allows more people to be involved and it's quite convenient. Um, so we we need to advance this this situation it, because it's a it's a it's a liability. It's 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 you know it should be somebody should raise this concern to risk management. That's all very true. You know, remember that six or eight months ago we were told if uh, this is not accessible by last October they would drop the whole program. Well, they haven't. It's still not accessible. We have a problem with this program, and no one seems to want to uh, deal with that. So, to solve the, the first problem, Brian, can you make sure that Vince is the okay to be the go-to guy and have his information on our agenda so people know who to call to try to fix these problems? But more than that, we have to figure out why this program is still not accessible. It doesn't pass the federal laws. It, it's not. It's not legally accessible it should not have been picked in the first place but uh, and, we need you know, yeah and i would if, if we could find an accommodation uh, uh, you know whether it, i don't i don't know about bob or anybody else who who struggles with this program but bob if you had a phone number that you could call a local number to be involved with would that solve the problem for you it it would help. Um, I'm just hoping for greater accessibility as far as um, I'm finding more accessibility with my mobile device because my PC and its programs are becoming legacy uh, in the, the category. They're they're old, they're outdated, they're no longer supported. So I'm relying more and more on my mobile devices for this type of accessibility in terms of Zoom and and go to webinar meetings. If if that answers part partly answers your your question, well, I guess I, I think we're pretty committed to this this software package. Or I, I'm not married to it, but it seems the city is, and, and um, it seems like an uphill battle to try and change that approach. Um, so how do we accommodate um, accessibility? You know, given that that situation and um, it seems to me, I could be wrong that the vast majority of the problems with this platform affect the visually impaired. Um, and um, if we had a phone line, I'm not sure what functionality might be um, lost to the visually impaired. What? What functionality does web a go to webinar give the visually impaired besides voice communication? I, I don't know. This is Michael uh, Rassler. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that question. 
but my son happens to work at log me in go to meetings uh, he's on the sales side not in technology but I'd, I'd be happy uh, during this meeting i'll shoot him a text and ask him uh you know if he's aware of any of that uh or if he can you know give us a, a somebody um you know on their tech side that uh, one of the staff members can call and ask the question to directly so i think that we we already know that they're aware um and, well we don't they, we don't nick we don't know that we really don't know that at all okay i i thought that we had heard from from vince that he had communicated with them i could be wrong i frequently am well, um, well nick, nick the problem is them who's them for for go to meeting go to I mean, really. When I say them, I, I'm speaking of the software developer um, at GoToMeeting. And, and I actually, Barbara, I do know, because uh, I've read um, their uh, discussion forums, uh, and it, it's widely known and criticized for its lack of accessibility. Um, yes, but that, that doesn't have anything to do with, with Santa Barbara and us and what they might do for us and why the city has been uh, complacent to accept nothing. I mean, you know, Brian is our compliance officer if we want to really get going on this. So I'm not assuming anything. All I'm seeing is nothing has happened. Nothing on the city side, nothing on their side. Well, Barbara, yeah. isn't that part of the course? Well, you know, Nick, you and I have different different perspectives on on this so i'm ready to go forward you know we know how to file a complaint we can file a complaint we can force action on this if we want to i i would i would sign on to that complaint well <laughs> I, um okay. do you want do you want to draft a, a, a request directly to brian a, a formal request I'd well you know i can actually Barbara, let's maybe maybe we'll uh, talk offline about this. I I think we're we're kind of getting a little in the rough on on the agenda, but yes, uh, I, I have a number I have a no, number of other grievances I'm thinking about filing. So I'll just add this to the list. Well, give me a call. Okay. Okay. I would like to just make sure that Brian at least can check with Vince and see if we can put his name and contact number on the agenda to solve that little problem first. Okay, and please, I think we should move on now. Uh, I want to say that Nick and I both went to the appeals board where the uh, the rules are the ADA and the California Building Code both call for spending on accessibility for people who are doing remodeling or renovations in commercial properties. And right now, the uh, process for figuring out what that construction cost is based on is very up in the air and very uh, tilted towards the developer saving money. So we had another big meeting last month. We're going to continue that this month. But that's all I want to say about the appeals board. We're trying to get a more equitable way that the builders, developers can spend the proper amount on the required disability access. And then I have a note here to see if uh, Barbara wants to say anything about her position at the downtown parking. Barbara, are you? Do you have anything to say? Um, yes, a few things to review. So, um, given my frustrations with our committee and access to the people, we need to have some mm, to advise whether they wish to be advised or not. I applied for downtown parking committee with. Um, uh, Jim's encouragement. So this has been really interesting. I've been to two meetings now and to the sense of been to. I've been in my in my dining room table with my coffee and it's been great to not have to be downtown at 7.30 in the morning. So um, at yesterday's meeting, the timing was great. They were, there was a discussion of the same the significant savings by discontinuing the waterfront uh, State Street shuttle. Um, and I brought up how it was, how it impacted our community and that there was no, no longer this kind of um, um, s simple transit for people who 
do not drive, uh, and along with people being encouraged downtown not to have cars, it was a problem. Then um, there was a discussion of the parking lots, and the other new member brought up how they were going to be um, handling time because the new policy is only 75 minutes of free time, only to park once and not to be able to move your car every um, every uh, hour and 15 minutes. And he asked, would the minutes be cumulative so you could go to several different lots before you used up your 75 minutes? Which brings us to the matter of uh, handicap parking where we've had twice that much. So they, they don't know, they're, they'll, they'll they're working on it. The other thing that um, I was concerned about was uh, in their vision statement that they include um, <clears throat> uh, privacy issues, and particularly, I was in. I didn't say this, but I'm interested that there shouldn't be a database of all the people with disabled placards in the community. That seemed to be a, an issue, something to work on. Then um, they brought up the State Street. Um, subcommittee and referred us to a website, which is how I knew to suggest we ask Megan um, uh, uh, for, for more information at this time. So that's a quick review as a new member. And I too had my communication problems and would have liked to have had a telephone number to call when I was cut out. So that that's my quick update. Thank you. Um, Barbara, I want to just jump in and, and thank you for joining that uh committee um you are a fierce advocate for accessibility and and i'm glad to have you there and um uh, it's it's some solace uh in in knowing that you'll be there when you leave us here so well, uh, thank you again. Well, and i think Nick, i thank had you, one thank, thank you very much and you'll be glad to know that I now have the um, cell phone telephone numbers for for both Rob and, and Victor. If I have and have been encouraged to ask questions anytime, so that is such a change in the weather. I can hardly tell you. Oh, great! Okay. It seemed like I had a um, a something else I wanted to comment, but I've lost it, so I'll I'll let it go. Okay, my last order. Is there anyone else who has any comments from the the members as far as meetings you've been to or information to share. Jim, I wanted to ask Brian if there are any staff announcements, because I, I think I was, I'm still confused because number eight on the agenda has our our committee, our sub subcommittee uh, re re reports. So I, I'm confused. It seems like number three is almost redundant with number eight. Well, let me deal with that, Bob. Number three is for things like Barbara's report or my report on agenda. Those aren't ad hoc committees number eight is strictly okay. for the ad hoc committees to report these okay. are the unofficial committees or okay. uh, unofficial information okay so my question was do we have any staff announcements from brian or norma or one of you um i i have some announcements that's just kind of fall under aba coordinators report i'll plan to do it okay then thank you okay Item number four is for public comments on items not on the agenda. Is there anyone who would like to make any public comments at this time? Mr. Chairman, I see three people in um, our as attendees accessible Santa Barbara. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. Nancy Caponi, if you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. And Peter Robertson, if you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. Peter Robertson has replied with no comments. Nancy Capone, if you would like to speak, please raise your hand. And let's see, I see. She has no remarks at this time. And Accessible Santa Barbara, if you would like to speak, please raise your hand. I see that Accessible Santa Barbara is not attentive at this time. Mr. Chairman, I turn the floor back over to you. Okay. 
Item number five has to do with approval of the minutes. As you know, we have now new minutes from Sarita where there are links to the audio tape. Instead of a lot of details in the minutes themselves, we're linked to the different uh, parts of the tape. So has everyone been able to read the minutes, I hope? And uh, are there any changes to the minutes that you'd like to suggest? If no one has any changes, then I'll uh, consider a motion to uh, approve the minutes. So moved. This is Barbara. And thank you, Sarita, for the great job. Thank you. Can I get a second on that uh, motion? This is Bob. I'll, I'll second. Okay. So we, we're approving the minutes of November 6, 2020. And thank you, Sarita, for that work. Yes. Sarita, do you need to call roll for that? Yes, please. Thank you. James Marston. Here. Robert yes. Burnham. Thank Aye. you. Robert Burnham. Aye. Nick Coons. Aye. Michael Rassler. Michael Rassler. Michael Rassler is yes. muted. Yes. I'm sorry about that. Thank yes. You. Barbara Silver. Barbara Silver? Yes. Thank you. And Suzanne Tejada? Here. Hi. Thank you. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> we have uh, approved the minutes. Item number six, chair and vice chair elections. Sarita, I think you asked for some nominations. Did you get any names in the hopper? Yes, Mr. Marston, I did indeed. I received three emails, um, one from James Marston, who said he would be willing to serve either position, one from Barbara Silver, who has asked that um, she nominate James Marston as chair, and one from Robert Burnham, who said he was honored to serve as vice chair, submit if the other chair members wish to vice chair, He'd be happy to yield the nomination. Otherwise, please submit his name into the nomination. So it sounds like uh, the only nominations were uh, the same as last year's board. Is that correct then? That Bob, will, Bob is willing to serve as vice chair and I'm willing to serve as chair. Is that how you look at that? That is how I see it. Yes. Okay. Then I guess we have to have an election to accept that uh, slate. So. Well, I don't know. Megan should be the expert on running unopposed. <laughs> Good feeling. <laughs> do, do we need a vote if there's no uh, opposing thing here? I'm not sure how that works. I think you do need to take a vote, yeah, just to confirm. But you could take okay. a vote by acclamation. Okay. Sarita, do your duty. Uh, may I hear a motion, please? Oh. So moved. In a second. So second. Okay. Thank you. I shall take the vote. James Marston. Yes. Robert Burnham. Aye. Nick Coons. Yes. Michael Rassler. Aye. Barbara Silver. Aye. And Suzanne Tejada. Aye. Thank you. All right. Good. Number seven, the ADA coordinator's report. This is where Brian uh, gives us some input on what's going on. So, Brian, take it away, please. Okay. Uh, thank you. Chair Marston, and thank you to the Access Advisory Committee for being here this morning. I do have a bunch of things that kind of fall under this uh, ADA coordinator report, so nothing that we're going to get into um, great detail on, just some quick items. And uh, Chair, Chair Marston, you did bring a couple of those up already, so that uh, made things a bit easier for me. Um, and the first thing I wanted to mention is that on this call, we do have um, the city's interim 
chief building official, official uh, Christina Guy. She's on the line. Uh, she came comes to us uh, most recently as the chief building official for Pismo Beach. She started with the city in early January of this year. And uh, if she's able to, I'm going to ask her to just jump on real quick and introduce uh, herself to you all so you're familiar with uh, who she is uh, in this role as interim chief building official. There we go. Thank you, Tina. Good morning, chair and committee. Um, as Brian said, my name is Tina Dye, and I currently work for Bureau Veritas, and we're contracted with the city while they process a building official recruitment. Uh, but prior to that, I worked for the city of Pismo Beach for 21 years in the building division. And for the last six years of that, I was I served as the building official and ADA coordinator. So I'm happy to be here. It's nice to meet you all. And I'm happy to contribute in any way I can while I'm here. Thank you, Tina. I have one question. When is the, uh, the selection process to end or is there any dates that are out there? I'm not, I'm confused on this. I know you're interim, but uh, I, I have no idea what happens next. Well, they are interviewing applicants Tuesday. And then from there, I'm not sure what the dates are. I know that we are contracted potentially through mid-March. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to say is many people have said to me, it'd be nice to have a director who's CASP or is actually ADA oriented or something. Someone that really cares about accessibility should be in that position. So I hope that somehow the selection committee has that as one thing that they're looking for. I know we can't just do that only, but it would be nice if someone was actually pro accessibility in charge of the building department. Sure, I know that two staff members are currently CASP certified. Two two applicants. No, two staff members, existing staff yeah. members. No, we're aware of that. We're we're hoping to get somebody a little higher up with CASP uh, knowledge. Um, I, I take it you're an applicant for the permanent role. I am. Great. And I'm not CASP certified, um, but that is one of my goals. And I do care very much about disability um, laws, uh, access laws, and um, but I am not CAST certified at this point. Okay. But you did say you were ADA coordinator at your former position, right? So you're totally you're aware of what's required, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm just right. curious: is, is that a uh, the ADA coordinator? Was that a role you volunteered for, or did you just come back from vacation and find yourself in that? <laughs> <laughs> The city asked me if I would be willing to do it, and I, when I became building official, uh, said that I was willing to do that. And so we went through the process of implementing the transition plan, and then um, during the next six years, monitoring the progress of it. That's wonderful. I'd like to chat more offline about this sometime if you have a chance. Okay. okay. Thank you, Tina. I'm glad you're here to help us now. And good Thank luck. You. Thank you. If I could ask Tina a quick question. Hi, Tina. This is Bob. Um, it seems like um, the public works director is in a real uh, precarious position and uh, walking a tightrope. And one, just wondering how you see yourself dealing with the tension between the desire of developers and businesses to promote their their business and make a profit as opposed to complying with um, accessibility codes and and um, making sure that their business and its services are accessible. It, there's really a tightrope that I know the former public directors, public works directors walked and didn't always fall on the right side. So I'm wondering how you see yourself in emotionally and, and um, financially, whatever, you know, dealing with that. Well, that's a good question. Um, I think that the bottom line is that, you know, property owners are required to meet the minimum code minimums, and it's our job to ensure that they do that. Um, there are um, 
special circumstances sometimes that make it harder, but the bottom line is they have to comply with the minimum requirements of the code. I, did that answer your question or were you speaking more of a relationship? Well, Maybe it's more maybe it's more a long term answer, and you and I can talk about this after the meeting. I don't want to take up time now, but it's just the whole idea of how you deal with that on on an ongoing, you know, over time basis, dealing with that tension of trying to um, really uh, deal civilly with both sides. Okay. Yes. Maybe it's a good conversation for another time. Sure. Bob, Thank I, you. I want to I want to point out, Bob, that you asked about the public works director, and Tina's position is the building official. Building, okay, building official, uh, okay. Not not the overhaul overall public works director, but uh, that's a okay. good question. Thank but it's for the building official, right? Yes. Thank, yes. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right, uh, Ryan, when you, <clears throat> I want to continue your report, please. Thank you, Tina, yeah. for that introduction. You're welcome. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, and I guess I would uh, just add uh, the chief, chief building official uh, reports to the uh, community development director, uh, whereas my position, the ADA coordinator and city engineer, I report to the public works director. And for those of you, um, this is kind of more of a staff update, uh, but for those of you who've been paying attention may know that uh, Rebe Rebecca Bjork has been appointed to the assistant city administrator position. She was the public works director most recently. Uh, I was filling in in an acting role for a while. And um, right now, Joshua Hegmark is filling in as the acting public works director, but that's gonna be another recruitment. Those two department heads uh, are yet to be determined who's gonna be in those roles in a more permanent basis. All right, um, let's see. So a few other quick things. Um, we heard about the sidewalk closure on State Street. So I'm not, I mean, on uh, Sola Street. So the only thing I wanna say there is uh, there continues to be a lot of work out in the, the right of way, even during COVID. Um, we have recently filled a supervisor position for our inspectors, our public works inspectors. We do still have one public works inspector vacancy. Um, so even when those positions are filled, it can be challenging to be everywhere uh, at all times. So I appreciate, uh, I'd like to think that we catch everything that's happening, every contractor that doesn't have the proper barricades or, or signage up. I'd like to think that we can catch it all. Uh, but in reality, things do slip past us, and uh, the sooner I can find out about them, I can let the team know and get somebody out there and have things corrected. Um, so I appreciate you getting the heads up from Jim on that one, from Chair Marston. Um, let's see, a couple other quick things here. CIP, the City's Capital Improvement Program, this is a five-year plan that gets developed every two years. And a draft has been produced and it went to planning commission. Uh, that is headed to council next month on March 16th. So for committee members who are interested in seeing what uh, the plan is that begins to shape the budget. Uh, and obviously we can't do anything unless funds are allocated and appropriated. So it's a key planning tool that feeds into the budget process, which is the other item I wanted to mention. Uh, there was an initial work session yesterday at council, and there will be a series of work sessions, uh, primarily in May and June, looking in more detail at the, the individual program areas. So as uh, those dates and uh, specific program areas get uh, scheduled, it may be of interest uh, for members of the public or this committee to uh, attend those meetings as well. Uh, let's see, blue curb parking. I wanted to mention this. It's been since late May slash early June, but staff has made some changes to the zero hundred blocks of 
all of those uh, side streets on the cross streets on downtown from Gutierrez up to Annapamu, um, where there are now um, yellow signs that are designated for uh, three minutes passenger slash 30 minutes commercial loading at all times. But the reason I wanted to bring this up with this committee is to let you all know if you weren't aware that these zones can be used uh, for people with the um, approved ADA placards. They can park in those zones. Uh, and again, they're on the 0 100 blocks uh, right up against State Street, uh, I believe from Gutierrez all the way up to Annapamu. Those Quick zones question. can be used without time limitations for people with the Quick placards. Question. So yellow curbs throughout the city are now uh, usable by ADA placards. Yes. Uh, is this a city ordinance or is this just uh, a, a uh, unknown policy? Because that's not what the placard uh, system advises. And, and so uh, a placard holder wouldn't know that. This is specific to the yellow curb areas on the 0 100 blocks have the signage that say three minute passenger slash 30 minute commercial loading at all times. And I can uh, check in with staff who are more knowledgeable than me on the specifics of parking and how that uh, would be applicable here versus not being applicable elsewhere within the city and we can uh, get that information out to the committee uh, today, probably. Thank you, Brian. This is Jim. That's a good idea, but it needs to be at least put into our blue curb parking guide. But it is confusing if people don't know that you can park there, then it's not going to be used. So it needs to be uh, put out there in, in the public to make sure that people understand that and it's only at that area and not other areas. So we need some confusion uh, clarification. So Brian, can you look into that? And yeah, and sign okay. I'd also like to suggest in, in getting the word out once it's clarified, uh, you know, I get, you know, emails from, uh, from Das Williams, from Salud Carbajal, from a number of our elected officials that include a variety of information on you know, interesting things that are happening that if you don't get that, you, you might never be aware of it. I don't know um, how we publicize something like this, uh, but I'd love to see a way of getting the word out to a much broader uh, community segment or you know, the entire community through some of those other regular and normative uh, you know, email missives that go out very, very broadly and just ask them to include, you know, this from the, you know, Access Advisory Committee uh, update or something. I agree. Uh, I think that, by the way, I, I wanted to lead with uh, this is great news and thank you. Um, that's that's progress and um, and I'm, I'm thrilled. Um, I, I, my initial re knee-jerk reaction beyond that is it feels like it it um at, at this point we only those of us on on this the committee know about it and uh and i you know would agree i'd like to see it go out uh more broadly and i think that um jim you've had discussions with some chair marston you've had discussions with somebody about um such announcements recently is that am I misremembering? Yes, I, I was going to get to that uh, in my subcommittee report, but I will say that Great. Nick has been very strongly looking for getting blue curbs on those zero blocks to serve the downtown area. So if they're now going to be uh, parking for uh, placard holders, that's a wonderful thing. But uh, can we spend a little bit of money and put a sign up there and then everybody's going to know? Otherwise, we have to get this information out and that's going to be hard to do. So, Brian, is it at all able to put a sign up there that also has the accessibility symbol so that people know they can park there? And then that uh, takes care of uh, the whole blue curb committees uh, or most of that 
problem that we don't have enough blue curb downtown. If we could put a sign up, uh, Nick, do you think that would solve everything then? And and Mr. Rassler also, if we just had the accessible sign up there, then they would know. This is Barbara. No, I don't think so, if, because we haven't inspected those sites to see that they actually are accessible. Ah, good point. Um, I I uh, I think it would certainly help. Um, and and would would love to to see signage uh included that that seems like a must uh a minimum um uh, i i feel like this needs to be supported in an ordinance somehow because i i, I just see potential confusion with you know training and and parking enforcement and uh, it, it it seems like uh, a half-baked uh, program, and uh, I would like to see it fully baked. I agree, Nick. I can see the police giving tickets there because they don't know what the deal is. I think we have to change the blue curb parking flyer that we have, which is not looked by many people, I don't think. But I think, Brian, I really want you to, or I want to suggest that you make sure we can get some signage up there so everybody's aware of it as you're driving down the street they know where they can park you so, know uh, it, it maybe this is a, a broader discussion uh you know the blue curb uh subcommittee would love to and has been asking for i think a year now to uh engage with downtown parking on on this and other uh initiatives that we've been advocating for um, and I see an opportunity to share accessible parking with commercial and maybe other um, areas that might be restricted by permit or something and, and um, doesn't have to be exclusive. I think that the city could be progressive in coming up with, with a minor ordinance that would allow for co-opting spaces and, and, and maybe we come up with our own, you know, curb pattern that that it's striped blue and yellow, alternating to indicate that you know it is both blue and yellow. Um, and uh, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity here to to uh, meet multiple needs. That's a very good suggestion, Nick. This is Jim. I think that'll be good. Brian, can you really uh, look into this? It's it's great news that is accessible, but if no one knows, then it's not any news for anyone except us lucky people on the uh, committee. So Brian, if you could look into that and figure that out, and, and also Barbara, I would ask that you ask them at the next sidewalk committee what they can do to make it more uh, knowledgeable to the <laughs> general public. <laughs> you don't mean, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't mean the sidewalk committee. Well, I, I'm at the, the downtown parking. So it's a nice program, but if no one knows about it, then it's, it doesn't exist. So thank you very much. Uh, all right. That's okay. good news, Brian, but we need to get more uh, information out. Thank you. Right. OK, thank you. Yeah, that, that hopefully is a step in the right direction, but uh, some more outreach. And then I do hope to convene the, um, the Blue Curb uh, ad hoc committee uh, relatively soon and we'll have this to talk about as well as uh, yeah. more of a longer term vision for that. Could, can we make sure that blue curb committee meeting that you said with uh, downtown parking is scheduled for the next meeting? For the next access advisory committee meeting? Yes, can we at least have an agenda item for that to be on? We were promised that we asked for that for this meeting and you said, well, we'll do it next time. So let's make sure that that is discussed at the next meeting, okay? I, I would settle for, I would actually prefer uh, that we get a, a subcommittee meeting downtown parking before the next AAC meeting. Oh, sure. Yeah. I think that, that makes sense. We'll aim to do that. And it may even be that there's a couple of meetings of the subcommittee before. Sorely needed. Considered, thought about something. Okay, I'm going to keep things moving here. It's it's 1030 at this point. Okay. Uh, and um, I have a couple other things here under ADA coordinator report, and, and we do have the subcommittee reports. So let's see the 
back here on my notes. Uh, wanted to give a quick update on the Access Advisory Committee, the resolution. Um, I have gone through that, looking at uh, some of the edits that that subcommittee uh, has provided. Um, and I have a working draft that only kind of came together at, uh, this week, so not quite in time to make uh, print for this meeting, but that's another subcommittee that I'd like to convene um, in pretty short order to take a look at that, and then uh, we can either bring it back at the next AAC meeting, the next scheduled one, or if depending on the, the amount of material, we may be looking at a special meeting um, before, what would it be? Uh, I guess it's May 2nd that the next scheduled one is. May 7th. May 7th. Okay. All right. So we may be doing a special meeting between now and then, and we could get um, good resolution on for that. Because I want, I want that to go to AAC uh, before we do the next annual um, update to council, and we could probably package the updated resolution with the annual report to council. That would work nicely. Uh, okay, so the last thing I wanted to mention, uh, this was kind of a curveball that came my way. I found out about this morning, um, but it sounds like uh, when I first saw it, I thought it was a joke, uh, but it was an email from Victor Garza, who was scheduled to present our item number uh, 11 this morning. Uh, he sent an email last night that he's planning to retire and will not be presenting today. So when I first saw it, I thought it was a joke. Uh, it turns out it's, uh, it looks like that is what's happening. Um, so we can still do that item at, uh, when we get to it, um, at least for a discussion, but there's not going to be we don't have staff available uh, to present. Fortunately, we did uh, send some materials out in the staff report. So um, I'm hoping we can still have some meaningful discussion. And that's part of why I was hinting at we're likely to have a special meeting um, between now and the May meeting because uh, we need to get into this item a little bit more. Uh, so uh, just a heads up on that. Going to look a little bit different when we get to that item. Uh, well, that thank you oh. very much, Ryan. I guess my my cell phone number isn't going to be too useful going forward. <laughs> Please uh, congratulate Mr. Garza on his retirement. Uh, ironically, I had it in my notes to state that I was pretty certain that he would retire before we made any progress with him. <laughs> well, he's got grandkids calling, and I can't blame him for that. Uh, it's just uh, hard, hard to find out at the last minute like this. So I appreciate wow. your understanding. Um, so that's it for my ADA coordinator okay. report. Uh, Ryan, this is Jim. Thank, thank you for all that. I want to clarify one thing. You mentioned a few times about these subcommittees that you'd like to meet soon. Are you open to have the subcommittee talk to you during a subcommittee meeting or afterwards to share their, their findings? instead of waiting for another three months to tell us here, is it okay if the subcommittees, if they want to, can just have you on that phone call? But I would encourage the subcommittees uh, to reach out to me anytime they have questions. Okay, questions. thank you. Now, I know we're running short of time. Uh, this is the uh, number eight subcommittee reports. And uh, I want to mention a few things here. We had the sidewalk ad hoc committee last week. Uh, we had a lot of things there, but I think because of time, I'm going to mention just the highlights of a few. And if Bob or Nick want to add more that's important, please go ahead. Uh, we talked about the big problem of all these old news boxes and newsstands around. They uh, are very dangerous for blind people to walk into these sharp metal edges and get cut up. You know, Bob's got some scars from all that. So there's a whole new ordinance about these 
But what scares me is that the uh, ordinance says that if they're not used for 14 days, they'll be removed. But of course, we don't have the staff to go around and, and check every news box every 14 days. So I'm not sure how that's going to be enforced, but there is a whole new uh, ordinance on that. And, and all the new boxes that are going to go in have to be totally ADA compliant with uh, cane detection so you don't run into the sides of the boxes. So that was good news. And uh, Nick had brought up a couple years ago, he did a lot of work on Google Maps showing a lot of blue curb places that are blocked in the parkway, either by mailboxes or by signs or by muddy dirt. So uh, Jim Dewey and the sidewalk committee uh, last meeting had fixed eight of them. And at this last meeting, three more of them were uh, fixed up so that they're now accessible. The barriers are out of the way, or they put new paving down to make sure that there's no mud. So those are the two major things from the sidewalk committee. If Nick or Bob want to say anything else about that meeting, go ahead, please. Jim, Jim, this is Bob, a couple things. Yeah, Jim also um, said that the uh, sidewalk by the down by the new Greyhound station, the bicycles have been removed apparently, so it's making that sidewalk uh, a safer path of travel. Um, Let me I put in, Bob, asked, the, the place is not even open, so I don't know if he says they, he said removed, but they're not open for business, so of course okay, there's no bikes out not front. Not even bikes there, but yeah. we'll, we'll see how that goes. But um, I I, uh, I think Adam Hendel's um, news rack um, report he sent us was very comprehensive. I sent him an email last night uh, pointing up a few things and asking him a couple of questions, so I'm, I'm glad that's moving forward regarding the newsstands uh, and Jim Jim did some other things that uh, it seems like he's really following through with a lot of things that we bring to him in the sidewalk ad hoc committee so I'm I'm encouraged if anyone's interested I could send you the mi minutes of that meeting if you'd like but uh, Nick do you have anything to add on the sidewalk committee nope not at this time okay and the next uh, subcommittee report is on the Blue Curb Parking Ad Hoc Committee. And before we start, I'd like to say we have one missing member there. So, you know, we're looking for someone who would like to be on that. It sounds like Mr. Rassler has interest in Blue Curb Parking, but uh, not putting any pressure on. But we have an opening for that. So, Nick, you want to uh, give an explanation of what's going on with the Blue Curb Parking Committee? Well, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the Blue per Curb Parking Ad Hoc Committee has nothing new to report and is unable to advance our proposed initiative, initiatives for over a year now because the downtown parking won't engage or staff in general won't schedule uh, an engagement for, for us to, to communicate and try and advance the initiatives that we have been proposing for over a year. So I okay. guess it doesn't really matter much that we are missing a, a, a member on the committee because it's it's stagnant at this time. Okay. Brian, I'm going to ask you real quick. You've said to us that you have talked to them about this. Has there been any progress that that you've learned? We've had a couple of internal meetings to talk about this, and I, I'm trying to get something to the point where we could meet with the blue curb subcommittee and i think we got there in the last meeting uh, so i do want to meet soon uh, and i think the idea is very similar to what you've heard in the past and i think it's something that um, mr Kuntz has mentioned this you know let, let's designate the blue areas now get them in and then have a game plan uh, you know, you could prioritize these uh, as far as, you know, we're going to do one a year where we actually construct it and make it fully accessible, fully compliant. Uh, but in the meantime, at least there would be a blue zone that would be usable, uh, more functional than not having one at all. But it would all need to be part of this plan where it's fully laid out and uh, prioritized. And that's where I think the committee could come in to help us determine you know, which locations are going to provide the biggest bang for the buck as we 
go through this program. It's not going to be something that we can build uh, in one fiscal cycle. It's going to take some time, but we can work our way through it. And if there's some agreement to um, having blue zones that will eventually be fully compliant, um, that we'd be willing to pursue that. Uh, and I think that's what's been talked about. And I think in the past, there was something, I, I'm still not understanding how the, the seemed like there was some ballet thing and a, a this for that, uh, that kind of hung everything up and it just reached a point of stalemate. But if uh, ballet is off the table, then let's just focus on Blue Curve and come up with a plan that uh, makes sense and, and go forward with it. So that's exactly where we've been for, for one year. Um, this subcommittee reported uh, over a year ago and, and, and suggested uh, seven locations that would improve uh, accessibility uh, distribution, accessible parking distribution in the, in the plaza area as a, as a starting point so that that, um, that recommendation has already been given, seven locations that, that could be reviewed and, um, and whatever um, legal hesitation there was has also been resolved in terms of trying, there was a prior concern that if you put in a blue curb it would trigger a bunch of accessibility that um, was prohibitively expensive and so nobody wanted to touch a blue curb um, and, and it's been over a year since uh, legal uh, the, the city uh, attorney's office has has reassured staff that that's not the case and that uh, the subcommittee has agreed that we would be better to have more blue curbs uh, than not add them for fear of the having to make them completely uh, accessible. This committee has also uh, agreed that we're, we're willing to have a blue curbs that are not completely accessible as long as there is some um, acknowledgement that some need to be completely accessible and a plan to move forward so it sounds like we're we're, we're all we've all been on the same page for for over a year and i don't understand why we haven't managed to get any progress in that time this is jim i agree fully just to point out the fully accessible blue curbs are do cost money but most many people don't need the quote unquote fully accessible blue curb what we need are blue curbs painted and the city is oftentimes painting a curb without making it accessible so the whole thing about oh they have to be accessible is a big red herring that's thrown out by people who don't want to do it but there's no if the city can paint a curb blue and that's okay, but when we ask for a blue curb, they go, no, we can't because it has to be accessible. That's a phony argument. I think we need to really get this committee and Brian to talk to downtown parking and at the next meeting, have this hopefully settled. And I can't say more strongly than that. It's time to get this thing done. If they want to turn it all down, give us some reasons at least, but don't just play the game of, we'll talk later. You know, hopefully with this, we can get that. With this, every other initiative that this committee, the Access Advisory Committee, has tried to advance, there's there's this recurring pattern where there's this feigned empathy and understanding and agreement to discuss, but but nothing ever happens. And I feel like, you know, it. it it's not a matter of incompetence. You guys didn't get to where you are because you're incompetent. You could do these things if you weren't held back by some force unknown to us. And and I, I want to start a subcommittee to investigate where that resistance is in the upper levels of our city uh, administration, because we're never gonna make any progress until we find that roadblock and address that. Well, Nick, you know, it's very clear we are advisory to the city administrator. So um, we have not actually directed our communications to, to, 
to to uh, resolving this problem. I don't know that we need to have another committee to do it. We can simply ask some questions and get some answers. So we've talked to everybody except the city administrator. He talks to other groups, but he hasn't talked to us. That's a good point, Barbara. And I, I think, Jim and Nick I, and Barbara, I think um, one of the things we requested and should request for future meetings is to have a representative from the city attorney's office because I, I think that's one main inroad along with uh, somebody working directly with Mr. Casey. I don't know if Matt Four would be the, the person. I don't know who, but we I, I think I'm in agreement. We need a better connection with the upper levels, you know, so it's not, you know, we're not dumping all this on Brian. Um, right. Brian, Brian, Brian can only do so much. Right. And, and I'd, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Councilwoman Harmon if she can comment here and is she willing to, to step in and help facilitate uh, escalating the, the resistance that this committee faces in, in getting any uh, traction with the initiatives that we're, we're proposing? I mean, it seems this, this co committee is almost a farce. We're, we're asked to be advisory to staff, but staff doesn't take any of our advice or very little of it. There's just constant um, lip service is all we get. Ms. Harmon, are you there still? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Nick asked if you would be able to help us at all with, with that trying to get some action going. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm I'm a little bit unclear. Um, it seems there are a number of different complaints that are being raised right now. Um, Actually, I, Ms. Harmon, I'm gonna clarify, maybe, maybe you missed my, my, um, my concern. It's very specific. What, whenever this committee comes up with an initiative, we we make recommendations and we get lip service but we don't get any action and if i was if i wasn't if i didn't know better i would think that staff was just completely incompetent and in unable to to follow through but but i know that's not the case that there's staff can only do so much because they are they have careers to think about they have they can't throw their boss or so, whoever it is above them under the bus and tell us why there's really resistance so well, yeah i understand up what you're saying i mean look i'll be frank you know there's many 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 committees that we have so i i have to be honest you know i i I don't think, I truly don't think that um, there is any nefarious intent from anyone not to uh, prioritize your ideas or to stop them in their tracks. Truthfully, I just, you know, this this isn't the only committee that, that staff members hear from and everyone is really is trying to balance um, the various concerns. So I would encourage you first to remember that and Second, you know, I, I think um, the wheels of government do move slowly. And I've heard this from a number of, of folks that there is this frustration that, you know, projects take a very long time or initiatives take a very long time to come to fruition. That's been one of my own frustrations, speaking very frankly with you guys. You know, I, I have ideas, things I want to see get done and, and to have to sort of um, accept that the timeline for these initiatives is not a year or two years, it's five years, 10 years. I mean, that's, that's um, we're, we're working on shortening that timeline actively, um, but it is in the nature of local government that it, it moves a bit more slowly. That said, I think there are a couple of things we can do and I, you, there have been major improvements. I think, you know, it's important, look, you guys are gonna have a seat at the table when it comes to redesigning State Street. You know, I know that stuff, um, maybe feels little and and I don't I certainly don't mean to minimize your frustration but you know that's that's really um, where it's going to be key 
and where you're going to have a lot of capacity to influence the direction that city policy goes sitting at, at that table. Um, so that's going to be really important. And then, you know, secondly, I'm happy to request the city administrator join us for a meeting. I'm sure he'd be very happy to, though I would um, caution, I think your, your, your role is actually not to advise Mr. Casey, but to advise the city council. Um, so I, I could be wrong about that, but I just want to um, clarify that, though I, I know for a fact that Mr. Casey um, is, is um, very, very, very much um, looking for your, in particular, this committee's feedback. So I, I know he would be very happy to join us. And if you guys think that would be useful to have maybe an item where he can speak to you and you guys can share your concerns with him, I would be very happy to facilitate that. And I think that could be a good place to start. What do you guys think about that? I agree. I think that would be a great thing to agendize for the June meeting. And I would look forward to such a, an opportunity to have frank, uh, productive discussions with, with Mr. Casey. Uh, I will note that I suffered from the same um, miss, it, belief, misunderstanding. I thought that this was this committee was advisory to council, but it uh, has been uh, brought to my attention <laughs> repeatedly that we are advisory to staff. Well, thank you for that. That's my bad too. I didn't realize that. So that's a good clarification and helps me to to understand as well. But um, I'm, I'm glad you like that idea. I will reach out to Mr. Casey myself and um, ask him to join us again. You know, I've had conversations with him about the importance of access issues and he's right there with us. So I know he'll be very happy to do so, especially given the role of your committee in advising staff. And, and um, I'm sure he'll be very, very happy to join us in June, but I'll make sure I send him a message. And Mr. DeMora, I'll copy you on that. And, well, uh, thank you very I'll, I'll, much. And I, I want to say, and as we're working with the resolution, this is a point of clarification that needs to be in our revision. Who who we report to, who we advise. Yeah. If and if I, we're if we're confused and making this confused, I think our resolution needs to address that. I'd sure like to see it be advisory to staff and council. Well, there's no reason why we can't still write letters, as Barbara said, to Paul Casey with these problems before the meeting. I think he should hear from some of these problems. And I want to throw this in real quick. Uh, the whole downtown parking group, not the committee, but the group, has put together this very quick and very badly run park it program with no oversight and also the bicycles on State Street. They get that done right away. But if you say, hey, can you can you paint a few curves blue for us, that well, doesn't well, get done at all. A, wait a minute. Yeah, they, they rolled out this this uh, parklet COVID uh, uh, initiative in, in weeks. And we just yeah. asked, please, before you do, include very specific. And we, we, we wrote the language for them. And now, nine months later, we're, we were going to get a report today that shows that they finally incorporated the language that we were pushing for before the ordinance was ever discussed at council. And okay. I understand your frustration. This is Megan. I would just ask for a little bit of grace um, on that. I I, I hear you. Um, I, I, I've, I've been patient for nine months. I can no longer be patient with my civil rights. Right, and I, that's why we're moving forward. And I know staff is aware that this is an issue that has to be rectified. So I, you know, this is important. We know, vital. It's key to everyone, and and they are moving forward with it. And city council has made that a clear to staff as well. But I, I do think, you know, just in terms of understanding, I, I, I hear what you're saying. This did roll out. Um, as you said, in a matter of weeks, and that is in contrast to what you know. I just said, you know, my expectations have to change. Getting something done takes five years, five to ten years. So it was a totally, totally new, totally um, about responding to a crisis. And what you are describing has to be fixed and is 
being done. So, you know, I want to thank you guys for putting in the time to get that language written um, because that is, that's been key to making it happen. And, you know, I know it wasn't fast enough, but it's getting done now. I, I, I struggle. Okay. I really struggle with that response because, you know, what, what we're talking about now, nine months later, boils down to about 15 bullet points, which, which this committee had, which, which everyone had. It was, it's, it's state law. It's in the California building code. It's ADA law. It was a copy and paste exercise that nobody could be bothered to deal with nine months ago. And it's, it's, absurd and it's it's uh, <laughs> nick i understand your frustration we, we need to move on here at least we're gonna please write to paul casey so he has stuff ahead of time and we'll have him on the agenda and i think we have to move on i'm sorry but the frustrations are there but like i said if they can put the new bicycles on state street without any really thought about how it works there's nothing at the train station nothing at the mtd we used to talk about having the uh, last mile covered for the commuters and all the amtrak early amtrak trains coming here and now you come to the train the train station and there's no uh, shuttle so it's not really making sense but somehow they got the bike project in right away and they got the downtown dining right away but they can't do a blue curb so Follow uh, the money, buddy. Follow the money. Yeah. Uh, so are we all done with the annual report and the resolution? Actually, we haven't talked about annual report. Uh, Brian did say he had a draft of that. Is that correct, Brian? I have a draft of the uh, revised resolution. Uh, and that's been looked at by the city attorney's office. I'd like to kick that back to the subcommittee to have another look at before um, okay. it goes to the, the full committee or to council. But uh, Ryan, can, can you give us an idea about when we can expect to see that so I can stop bugging you? Mm -hmm. Sure, I, I can share that with the subcommittee. Um, I, if not today, early next week, uh, and then we can, if we feel like we need to meet, we can meet to go over it, or we can just uh, sure both via email on that since we have okay. committee. Thanks, Brian. What I was asking was, I thought you told me you also had a draft of an annual report. Is that in, is that cor correct? No, not at this point. Okay, that okay. Usually comes a little bit later in the year. Okay, and then the last subcommittee here is the website uh, replacement project. Bob, do you have any news to? Uh, I, I'm not. I actually, I've received several emails from Scott Nelson. I've been remiss in reviewing those. I know that um, <clears throat> there is a timeline in place for when the the subcommittee um, for for the warp project plugs in to um, uh, input for this new web platform. I believe Scott mentioned sometime around March or April when they're going to want to receive our input on accessibility uh, for that for that website. But I, I still need to review. Scott has sent me a lot of material. A lot of them are the proposals and uh, just a lot of information that I haven't had a chance to slog through yet. But I will uh, try to get up to speed on that. All right. Thank you all. Uh, we're running late so uh let's take a five minute break and we'll uh reconvene with the facilities update okay what time is it now uh oh it's 11 o'clock right can we be back at six after 11. sure thank you
Okay, are we back? I'd like to call the meeting back to order. And I do want to apologize. I forgot again to ask for public comments. So first on anything previous to this, does anyone have a public comment? I'm sorry, but I don't see the people out there. It's hard to remember public comments. So Sarita, do you have anybody who wants to speak on any of the prior issues? Mr. Chairman, I have been watching and we have one person has an HMB, they have not raised their hand. And if Mr. Robinson would like to make public comment on any item, please raise your hand and she'll um, put you in there. Thank you. So you have no comment, you have no uh, nope. hands raised? There's, there's been no hands raised, no comments. Okay, well then we'll go with item number 10, facilities updates. To receive uh, update on the 2000 uh, transition plan, and but I think this is really has to do with uh, uh, capital improvements projects. So, uh, right, are you uh, ready? Chair Marston, I'm I, I'm going to uh, introduce our speaker on this item, and I just wanted to kind of explain this. So. Typically, you hear from folks in public works engineering. Um, sometimes it's Ashley Shu or somebody from her staff, and they provide updates on capital improvements that are taking place within the, the city's right of way. Um, 
Angela Oslin, who is on screen now, is our facilities manager, also in public works. And so she oversees much of the work that's taking place, not in the right of way, that uh, also has to do with uh, accessibility. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to her and she's got an update to kind of roll through as you've seen before with the, the streets type projects. These are gonna be more facility oriented. So thank you, uh, Ms. Oslin, and take it away. Thank you, Mr. Demore. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, and th thank you for being so patient and waiting all this time to give your presentation. Thank you for having me. Um, so it, it sounds from the discussion earlier, you are all well versed in this transition plan. So I will get right to the nuts and bolts. I know this is a long meeting. Um, so we had some very exciting um, projects that were completed and are also ongoing in this current year. I'll go through those really quickly. Obviously, everyone knows that the Cabrillo Pavilion construction was completed last year in April. Um, it is fully accessible, and this includes the building and the site work. We were involved in the project management construct, excuse me, and construction of that uh, project. Um, we we hope that it will be open soon to the public, as I'm sure we are all um, looking forward to COVID being over and getting to get back to the use of our public facilities. With that said, to move on, um, we also have a leased facility that is the city attorney's office and we did um, some accessible work in there with a minor project which included creating an accessible front door entry um, and that's just an example of a minor project that we do but some of the other larger projects that we have currently on the docket are the central library elevator um, this is currently in design we expect the design to be completed in the spring here it is currently um, going through the building permit process review. Um, it, it is a, an ADA compliant elevator. If you can imagine where the um, main floor is and there are two staircases, the hope is that it will be kind of in the center of that, of that building and, and be a, a really great focal point for the library. Um, our hope is that construction will start in the summer of 2020, 2021, excuse me, on that project. We also have the City Hall Elevator project currently in design. Um, that design we expect will be completed in the spring of 2021. Um, <clears throat> it, it will be a fully compliant ADA elevator that will serve all three floors of City Hall. Um, it's taken a little bit longer to design because we had some interesting challenges with where it's um, situated and, and how to deal with the structure but it seems to be working out very well and we're very excited to have that uh, plan set go into review here shortly. Um, construction is, is really based on future needs funding, so it's not currently set to be funded. We've got a lot of projects going on right now. Um, and I know that there's some concern about the um, income and CIP with our Measure C funds uh, due to COVID impacts to budget, but that is still a very high priority for us to complete. The Central Library Plaza, also in construction, um, that is expected to wrap up in design in the spring of 2021. We have a couple of items that we've addressed. They're specifically ADA um, barrier challenges that we think we found a, an excellent resolution for. And so we're excited to wrap that up and hopefully begin um, construction this summer pending funding. Uh, moving on, the central library lower level staff area, if you can imagine down um, there's that children's library and then adjacent to it is the staff area. We're going to be using, it's, it, we're not using our ADA funds to fund this, but we are um, uh, doing some work that for that lower level staff area that includes accessibility. Um, and that we hope that construction project will start in the summer of 2021. So as you can imagine, we have a lot going on here. Uh, and then also we have McKenzie Park restrooms. If, if you've been um, out and about and seen or heard of this project or experienced uh, McKenzie Park and some noise going on over there, um, we hope to have that construction project completed this March. And then finally, we currently also have in design the 
um, ADA compliant second floor restrooms at City Hall, right next to council chambers. We expect that design um, to be completed in construction to start in the summer of 2021. So that's that's currently what we have going on. Um, things that are up and coming are Eastside Park restroom remodel. It is, uh, the scope does include ADA upgrades for our restroom. We have a 630 garden minor renewal project, particularly in permit counter in that area. And that will involve elements of ADA upgrades. We have the Louise Lowry Davis Center site improvements. It's not funded by facilities, but it is um, includes ADA upgrades like walkways and ramps. And that construction is estimated to start in March of 2021. Uh, we also have the Muni Tennis Minor Renewal Bathroom ADA Upgrades Project in the future. And then the Corporate, car, corporate Yard Repavement Project where we have an ADA accessible parking stall um, at the rear of the building for our staff um, that, we're, that we're currently working on. And that project should be completed here in the spring of 2021. So, so that's a mouthful and a lot, and I will welcome questions. And Angela, this is Bob. Um, first thing, how how does this plan overall uh, segue with um, the um, the whole State Street promenade and outdoor dining projects, and also the, the a lot of talk about the State Street charrette uh, idea? How how does that all mesh together? That's an excellent question. <clears throat> I will say that, uh, so my area of um, kind of oversight is the facil facilities for civil um, buildings. So basically it's city owned buildings. Because I, I don't oversee downtown parking or downtown parking buildings or streets, I really don't have a lot of involvement in it other than coordinating our path of travel with the existing path of travel in the right of way. So, so I work with them as it comes up, but I am not um, tuned into State Street. Okay. Thank you, Angela. This is uh, Chair Marston. I have a few questions. I worked a lot on the Cabrillo Arts project and saw some errors there with accessibility and we got those fixed on the plans. I would love to see the place before it's open to the public. Is there any way that you can sneak me in there so I can actually get a view of what's there? Yes, Chair Marsden, I believe that we can make that happen for you if you um, want to coordinate and I can coordinate with Mr. Um, Demore. I think we can make that happen. Okay, we talked about having a whole group go there, but with COVID, I don't know if that's impossible, but if we stayed far apart, could we have a few people come and look at it? Uh, maybe you and Brian can, can work that out, let me know, but at least I would like to see this uh, right now. When I, Last time I was there, I had that fences around it, so I couldn't get in. So anyway, if you could do that, I like that. And I just want to <laughs> clarify something. We, we, had, we had a tour for our committee that was announced as a, as a meeting, so interested members of the public were able to join us at that time. So maybe, Jim, if you do a video tour, that would suffice and the rest of us could watch from someplace else um, okay. safely and see see the, the, all the changes, That's including including the wheelchair ramp out to the out to the beach. Okay. That would be so exciting. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. And I, I just want to I clarify. Think, I, I think before Mike was involved with um, his new job, there was a tour that either the county did or something like that that's on that's online for access, access for their members um, to the beaches, one of the beaches. Anyway, there's something out there, and it would be nice if the city would put up something publicizing the beach access through. Cabrillo. Thanks. Okay, good idea. So maybe I could look at it first and then we could get city people with the TV crew or the, the cameras to do a, a nice tour through there showing all what's been done. Okay, and, and just to clarify something, I'm glad you're working on the city hall elevator. If It's my understanding that there was never any access to the basement. Is that correct? Just the stairs? Uh, there is access through a rear employee door, but I wouldn't call it 
a fully okay. accessible compliant. And you, you, you came in, and you came in from the parking lot side. Is that or that that uh, there's a ramp going down to something off of Anna Kappa? Is that that's how you got correct. in? But there was no elevator access to the basement, correct? Not currently, correct. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, thank you for those updates. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Well, I do want to say that if the bathrooms at Mackenzie Park have been finally worked on, that would be like a major milestone. If you said March, is that really true that there that work is going to be completed in March? It's currently in construction. So barring any strange thing that is an obstacle in the way, I can't imagine that it wouldn't be completed by the end of March. Well, well, Nick, I think you should take a look at it. So if there are problems <laughs> going on now, we can take care of them before it's finished. Yeah, well, I, I'm, uh, I've been on this one since the start. Um, I think that this 30 year old transition plan issue uh, or 20 year old, whatever it is, would would still be um, nowhere uh, if it wasn't for my insistence. Uh, so you better believe I'm going to see through to <laughs> completion and, and uh, make sure. Thank it's you. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you for all the updates. I'm, I'm happy to hear that another major milestone on the transition plan or or three are going to be checked off soon um and uh i think that you know there was the last big transition plan update named eight major city facilities mckenzie park city hall library were three of those um so um i'm i'm uh I'm pleased to see that these are finally getting done. And another one of the items was the police station, and now with the new one being planned, and we don't have to fix the old police station, so that's that'll be checked off eventually, hopefully. I yep. do want to uh, give give Nick credit for the Mackenzie Park. I was there for years. His son was in Little League there, and Nick had to take a two or three block high uh, tour just to use the restroom, leave his son there and go three blocks away. And he's been on this and on this and they keep putting it off, but I'm finally glad it's finally being done. Thanks for, for all your pushing on that one, Nick. Well, thank you for acknowledging it. Are there any other comments about the uh, capital improvements that we have heard about? Well, I do have one more question. The the uh, plaza, can you roughly say what's going on? You didn't mention ADA access, and I know it's a pretty a flat area, but there's a, a slope there next to the art museum. So what exactly can you tell us that you're doing at the plaza? Sure. Um, what I can tell you is that we are getting rid of some of the obstacles that were in the way beforehand. <clears throat> we're moving towards some ramps that will um, be able to connect the upper plaza with the lower plaza. There obviously are going to be some stairs in there, but there will be some switchbacks and all of that will um, flow into La Arcada and into okay. the museum. Oh, right from the plaza into the kind mm -hmm. of the, the parking area, drive area there. Right. So it should be okay. a continuous path. Oh, good. Now, I know it's not your bailiwick, but do you know when the art museum is going to be finished? Oh, I don't. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I'm. It just oh, seems to take a lot. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. If there's no other questions, thank you for your time. Excellent. It'd thank you nice. so much. It'd be nice to hear another update in um, I don't, I don't know, uh, later this year or or, or net next year this time. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, the last item was to hear from Victor about outdoor dining. And since he's not here, I think I can make a few things. I spent uh, two and a half hours. Chair Marston, um, yes. before we jump into that, do we want to pause for the public comment opportunity? Oh, okay, sorry. Thank you. Are there any it's public okay. comments about the facilities?
plan that was just given to us. Chairman Marston, I do not see any public comments. Nope. Okay. Thank no you. Um, Thank you. I just want to real quickly uh, make a point of clarification on something I said earlier for the record. Um, I, I have, I am aware of a tendency to use the term staff out of context or in unclear context. And I just want to um, clarify that when I said staff earlier in, in expressing my frustrations with initiatives, I was speaking to the larger city staff as a whole and not pointedly at AAC staff, Brian Diamore. Thank you, Nick. I, that, I heard that too and was going to say something, but when Nick says staff, he just means the city staff, period, not, not the ADA staff, okay? Thank you. All right, and then Chair Marson, if you don't mind, before we get into anything on item number 11, uh, you did hear from me earlier and we don't have staff, unfortunately, available uh, to present on this and we're also uh, running low on time. I need to be somewhere uh, pretty soon. Uh, I want to say two things that I can commit to here. Um, one being uh, that it's become pretty clear to me that uh, I would like to have a cast on board to help with this and I want to move on this very quickly. Uh, I've already gotten some recommendations from our internal casts uh, of some folks who would be really helpful in this area. Uh, so I'd like to work with the, the subcommittee that we have and try to make a selection on a task. Uh, that's one thing I'm, I would like to commit to. And then uh, the other would be uh, to um, have a special meeting um, and not have to wait until May, have a special meeting hopefully have that cast uh, on board and able to attend that meeting uh, and then we can uh, get into more of the details. I know there's frustration out there um, about, uh, you know, we shared a bunch of information that I think is a step in the right direction, but it's still several steps away from where we need to be. Uh, you know, we have the updated guidelines are helpful at this point. I've shared them with other communities and they've appreciated seeing that. Um, and then the checklist that we have is good. The um, spreadsheet that was put together, at, um, it needs more work. Uh, we know it needs more work. And I think, uh, Jim, you'll probably share what you observed and what you and Victor talked about on your walk, but we need to get more detail in that spreadsheet so that we can see uh, exactly where certain deficiencies are. It's not enough just to have uh, a path of travel. Uh, there are a lot of details associated with that uh, and we need to be looking uh, more closely at that. And uh, there may be a path, but there may not be a handrail or there may not be um, appropriate slope or uh, you know wh whatever the detail is um, and we just need to flesh out that spreadsheet and uh, make sure that all of these facilities are in full compliance. We, we, we'd say we don't have any excuses at this point. Uh, we've, we've had a number, some legitimate, uh, but uh, we want to move on that. So my ideas are bringing this CASP on board and uh, calling a meeting. Um, it, it doesn't have to be a long time from now, um, hopefully still this month, um, and getting into more detail on this item because today I feel like it's going to be, um, you know, we, we've heard a little bit about the, the frustrations and I, I get it. I, I think I understand probably better now than I did uh, previously. Um, so um, yeah, just wanted to share that and um, let you guys have a discussion because we did share some materials and I'd like to hear some feedback on those materials, things we can do to enhance that. Um, if you can kind of steer your 
discussion in that direction okay. that would be most helpful to staff. Brian, this is Chair Marston. I appreciate your idea of getting the cast, but who would he report to? Would he be on part of downtown parking? Or how would he have any valid input into these many problems? Well, would he work with you or my, who's he gonna? My idea would be that the, the person would report uh, to me initially with, with all of this that's going on, okay. uh, but would certainly be part of uh, a team, uh, including downtown parking, including the subcommittee. Uh, and I'd like that person to be in it for the long haul because State Street isn't just what we've got out there today, but there's going to be a transition to some interim condition where people are modifying parklets to match um, ABR HLC guidelines that are going to be developed. And then okay. even further down the road, uh, depending on what happens to State Street, there's going to be some other configuration. So every time we're imagining these um, iterations, uh, I think it's important to have a CASP. I know we have internal CASPs who are great, um, but to me, there, there's this added value of having the independent person come in and uh, not feel like right. they have to try to protect anything, that they're, they're, exactly. they are exclusively looking at uh, what the yes. ADA say we have to do. And I want to hear from them right. uh, yes. on all of this. Right, get the internal politics out of it, finally. I'm going to try to get a brief preview, especially for Mr. Rassler. So hold on, back hold on. Yeah. I, I, I want to ask a quick question about this cast. Uh, I, I, a, I love this idea, thank you. Uh, B is, are we looking for a volunteer or is this something that we're going to budget for? This is something we would fund. It's, this is an important program and I don't think it has to come at a huge cost, but I think it would bring great value. I agree. I, I would love to have um, some ability to, to, you know, when, when staff and, and this committee think it's appropriate to 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 consult with with a, a cast, I think that would be huge in in um, helping bring a a high a professional level of understanding uh, to the appropriate powers that be. Uh, so right. thank you for that um, yeah. suggestion. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, I would definitely like to engage uh, the the committee in the selection of that cast. So there's a a comfort level okay. uh, of yeah. the committee uh, with, with who would be involved in that. So just to make sure, Brian, I, I love the idea. Would we be able to talk to that cast about other problems that we see, not just the dining? This would be like our own cast person we can consult with? I think it might depend. That's something that, uh, you know, as we get into an actual contract, we would have to develop what that scope of work would consist of, okay. I think. As long as it's going through me, that would be okay. I mean, generally with any contract, you've got to have your, uh, your point person. Uh, but if you're working with me and there are things that are coming up at the committee level that we want to kick over to the task, um, certainly that would be another added value uh, of having that person on board. Is that something that you're still interested in pursuing for yourself too, becoming a cast? Yes, it, it certainly is. And even if I got that, I think to me, um, I would, I like the, the independent uh, reviewer coming in. Um, but yes, I, I kind of have taken a pause on that with everything that's been going on. I don't even know what they've been doing with the testing. Maybe it's gotten easier at this point, so I should probably jump on. <laughs> well, that is so ex so exciting and so encouraging. Really, it's just amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Brian. very very impressive. I I appreciate it very much. And in far as far as selection, I think that a couple of us could could make recommendations and could probably also give you a short list of people that we would not want you to engage with. Okay. Brian, one of the things we discussed in the sidewalk ad hoc committee on Monday uh, in in terms of the uh, parklet guidelines was the whole challenge of enforcement. 
and and you know when a business is out of compliance you know um what what is the, pr the procedure what's in place what's lacking as, in terms of getting that business to comply i think that's one of the things we discussed right and i i it doesn't have to be that complicated i think we've got a process that all we need to do is follow it we can't be afraid to follow it um, so um we've been successful when we've gone down that path we just have been i think uh too patient uh, at this point i would just call it out that we've been too patient waiting for uh, modifications and it, it's amazing how as soon as you let attorney an attorney know about a problem all of a sudden things things start to change uh it gets people's attention right away and there's nothing wrong with using that uh that hammer when you need to just another case where uh, perseverance will trump patience <laughs> yeah okay so that's that's i just wanted to kind of kick that off i don't know uh if the committee uh i'm sure there's a lot you'd like to share on this item um, but i would encourage you to if you have anything try to focus it on uh feedback on the materials that we've provided, anything we can do to uh, tighten that up. And I will commit to uh, these couple of things that I shared with the past and uh, a special meeting uh, as quickly as we can. Uh, whoever the right people will be at that point in time, because it's still sort of up in the air with uh, Mr. Garza. I want to make a side comment because the uh, the emphasis is moving to aesthetics. There's a color chart with a new guide that makes it very, very clear that yellow is the color that stands out and the other colors all kind of run together. Something that our committee has been working on, working on, working on to get yellow as the color for the um, truncated domes. The, another problem with the information that's coming out in these guides is they're not dated. So a person would not know whether they're looking at the latest version, if they printed it out, or if there's a later version for, that they should be consulting. And, nor can you track change over time because there's no, no dating or archiving. So that's a, a problem that I've noticed. Okay, uh, Brian, this is Jim. I'd like to get moving here. I have a re report, but you said before you had to be done by 12. So uh, what's what's your uh, time that you have to leave? Um, it's it's not necessarily a, a hard, fast time, but the, the family's packed up and ready to go on vacation. So it's oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Better. Well, I want to try to give a quick report here about our walkthrough and stuff. But first, a little bit of history for Mr. Rothfer and stuff. In mid-May, when they first announced this, we wrote to the ADA, we wrote to City Council, we wrote to uh, other people. I know Nick did, Bob did, and I did, saying, please enforce accessibility. We understood there was a quick thing to get this in to help the, the businesses, but 10 months later, there's still almost all of them are non-compliant. Now, uh, we were told in October that we would have an inspection. And if they didn't pass the inspection, they had a week to fix it. And if they didn't do it by two that week, uh, they would be inspected a second time and then it would go to the attorney, okay? That was our promise in October. No, nothing was taken to the attorneys. And as you saw in that, spreadsheet from Victor, he had almost everybody marked as ADA accessible, right? Almost all yeses. I'm having a little feedback here. Is everyone hearing me? Can you just tell me you can hear me? I can hear you fine. Okay. Yes, I hear you. No so problems. I talked to Victor about that and we walked uh, two and a half hours yesterday and there was probably uh, a third or to a half of them were totally out of compliance. And I don't know why or who did the checklist. Uh, Victor realized that 
he has one column for ADA accessible. I said, you have to have a column for everything that's on the guidelines. We have a guideline with 10 to 15 different things you have to do. And somehow there was one column to say yes or no. So some of the major things were, there are many ramps that don't have wheel stops so your wheel can go off the sides that's in the guidelines, not enforced, and yet those people got to pass. There are many places where there's <laughs> fencing around the entire street level area so you can't get to it from the street and they have no ramp to get to it from the sidewalk that's totally not accessible forget the ada's uh definition of access you can't get there period uh so in one place i hadn't had the, they've had the fencing uh until last week they finally put a ramp in and i sent a picture to suzanne i think you'd enjoy that right where they have a ramp up against a tree. So yes, I saw that. I, okay. I think that ramp is movable and probably just got shoved in that location. But it's been there for a week at the same spot. So yes, it's movable. Yeah. Okay, and the other problem is the guidelines constantly talk about accessible tables, which have height requirements, 27 to 34 inches. There has to be clearance underneath so you can get your wheelchair under there. They have to be, uh, different dimensions, okay? And it says they're supposed to have the ISA sticker on it. None of them, okay, one of them had a sticker. The rest of them didn't, and yet Victor had it checked like compliant. He had no idea what an accessible table was. I sent uh, drawings back in October, which he said, I don't have that, so I sent it again yesterday. So what we did yesterday was he had a whole bunch of new columns for different areas, and he did a lot of notes yesterday and he talked to people that were owners, okay? But basically, there's hardly any accessible tables. As many people realize, there's a bunch of what they call bar rails on these uh, parklets where you have to have a stool and a high rail, like sitting at a bar. That is not allowed to have that without any kind of lower counter. In every uh, commercial place, you must have a lowered counter, whether it's city hall, where you go to pay your bills or a restaurant, they have to have some kind of lowered place where people in wheelchairs can service. That's hardly, none of them have that. Many places have the high tables and the high stools, and there's no place for a wheelchair to uh, join anyone else. So that was totally not done correctly. And it was just, it was sad to see how this thing is like, uh, mostly everything looked good on that chart, and another another thing that happens, uh, oh, the path of travel into the parklets. You have to at least have a four foot path of travel between tables so you can get through. And there's many places that we saw that there was no way for a wheelchair to get even into the parklet. So that was totally not done correctly. And then the last thing was we forced or asked for and got a nice statement that said the sidewalk must have a six foot straight open path of travel. And I had Victor measure these things. We got down to three feet for some places, a lot of four and a half, five feet places. And they were all said path of travel. If you look at that chart, it says six foot, everybody accepted or everybody was passed on that. That's ridiculous. Bob knows it, Nick's seen it. There's, it's just, it was a terrible work. I told people, you know, when I was a professor, I thought if my students had turned that in, I would have had to give them all Fs for their work. Mm -hmm. And the saddest thing was there was a bunch of tables there or columns that uh, Victor said, oh, those shouldn't have been there. Well, if they shouldn't have been there, then why did it get sent out? And, and why on the last inspection was last Friday. So somehow 65 places were inspected on, on one day last Friday and mostly all given a pass. So he did have new columns. We wrote a lot of notes. We spent two and a half hours walking up and down the street. We have to have somebody to say, hey, you're not doing it right. My feeling is this, I'm a pro business guy, but if I'm gonna give you free real estate to put your tables on and to make money on and to have a bar on, and you're getting a free place to do business and you can't even follow a guideline, that's terrible and it should go directly to the city attorney and enforce the ordinance that this was done on. And my last statement is this, Brian, I hope you can maybe think about this. In our guidelines, 
they have little check boxes next to all the stuff you're supposed to do, right? The height, and the, right? So all the check boxes are there. I'm wondering, can you just send that checklist out to every owner and say, I want you to check and say what you think you have done correctly and sign a name with your official agent, either your lawyer or your owner. I would like to have a record of all of those restaurants saying, we have checked this and we have these things. And then the inspector can just go by and say, okay, you don't have this done right. You don't have that done right and do some kind of enforcement. But we've had this uh, ad hoc committee the whole time and not once, not once has downtown parking or anyone called us up and say, what do you think about this new checklist? Susan and I and Sean once or twice went with Victor for walkthroughs and the same thing we pointed out never got fixed, but they never said, hey, we're gonna do a checklist. I asked uh, downtown parking since October, please send me a copy of this list you're using. And Brian knows, I've asked him over and over again, please get me this. We finally get one a few days before the meeting, which was a sloppy, sloppy checklist. So I just wish that something can happen very soon. These places are not accessible. Jim, it's Michael. So first of all, th thank you for that uh, background. That's stunning, quite frankly. Uh, but it, it appears to me pretty obvious why Victor retired. Uh, only kidding. <laughs> only kidding. Just kidding. Um, but I, I did have a question. What do you, and, and we did, uh, you know, Santa Barbara jumped into the, the promenade uh, uh, approach and, you know, really was trying to look out for, for businesses in the community, et cetera. Uh, in, in a great effort and, you know, all the stuff going forward. My, my question, though, is in other communities, you know, like, like Santa Monica, you know, that's had a, uh, a promenade for years. How are they, how have they handled and addressed their issues of accessibility? Uh, this sounds so much, you know, and again, hearing this for the first time with, with um clean ears, I guess, um, it really sounds like much more of an enforcement issue than any of the work that DAAC has done in terms of what would be appropriate and what would be helpful for community I members agree. with disabilities. Uh, so, you know, A is enforcement, but, but what is a place like Santa Monica or other communities around the country that have had, you know, these uh, public promenades for years? How do they handle enforcement and how do they handle uh, you know, ADA compliance. We, we don't um, need to, I was going to say, we, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, but we do my, need to inflate it properly to our terrain and figure out which spokes to tighten and loosen so it runs efficiently and effectively. That's all. Sorry. I, I can comment, Michael, I can comment on that. Um, these these uh, parklets and these outdoor dining areas do not require the, the uh, businesses to go through the permitting process. Uh, which would be submitting official documents, having it reviewed by for code. This was sort of an emergency ordinance that was done quickly. So that is where the enforcement um, is not there. There, there isn't the checks and balances that go through with a permit. Okay, so so true. And, and, and I said, as I say, as I said, you know, I know we, you know, kind of rushed into this, and, and and that was appropriate at that time. But we're now, you know, nine, ten months later, you know, and, and we still have the enforcement issues. Uh, you know, all, all of what I've read, absolutely good work to put into place, but it doesn't really matter if it's not being adhered to. You know, so I'm I'm just suggesting that we look at how how have other communities. With, with a similar structure, manage that issue of, of compliance and, you know, if need be, you know, how do we transition this, you know, so that, uh, you know, our businesses uh, can, if it's determined they should, you know, get permits and, and really formalize this going forward so it's not just kind of, you know, being run off the corner of somebody's desk. Mike, I like, Michael, I like Jim's idea of asking for a written record of of the checklist uh the businesses have to um draw up and sign by either their owner or employ uh attorney or whoever and then have the inspectors come and compare what's 
um, on the checklist that the business is signed and what's not being done. So that maybe that's the first step in in this whole compliance process. Well, well um, um, Bob, Bob, we don't want a first step without an overall plan. And what he's asking for is um, addressing the broader problem rather than taking bits and pieces here and there. Okay. Thank well, you, I would say, Let me uh, first address Mr. Rassler's comment. Many of the promenades, like San Diego, they don't have curbs there. <laughs> they've, they've brought their street up to sidewalk level. So you don't have all the problems of the ramp and stuff like that. Okay, so we have, we haven't repaved State Street and brought it up to sidewalk level. So we have a lot of curbs in the way. But then again, the major thing was, and I understood the rush to get this happening, but that was in May. And if you still haven't enforced anything, not one person has been fined or or had their parkets uh, removed. No, nobody. There's terrible well, ones out there. Well, and, well, you know, the, the language that came up at the uh, downtown parking committee was um, progressive enforcement. Now, yeah. I don't know what progressive enforcement is. But I know what enforcement means, and it means enforcement, and there hasn't been one. So in 10 months, you haven't enforced anything, and all you have to do is walk down there, and you'll see all sorts of stuff. The, what was really crazy was yesterday, we talked to owners. They go, oh, I never knew I had to have an accessible table. I never knew I had to have a path to travel. It's in the guidelines. So that's how the people who have their businesses downtown they know that they can get anything they want from the city because they're they're the cash cow or something this is a terrible idea to, to have people think that they can say oh i didn't know that was required it's in their guidelines they're giving away free land to make money on you should at least follow the guidelines okay there's no sense that the city doesn't have strength to go you can't have that anymore unless you fix this well, it's a matter of community standards as they're understood at this point in time. Right. And the standard is you can make money if you are a business person, but if you worried about accessibility, it doesn't matter to anyone. It seems like, I, I know it's kind of blunt to say, but when you talk to owners over and over again, please do this, please open up your path of travel. I don't need to. Some places actually put signs on the sidewalk saying, please walk in the street. No, the guideline says you must keep six feet of open path of travel. Imagine Bob Burnham with his cane trying to walk down these sidewalks with three and four wide, you know, jogging around. Anyway, I'm I'm sorry, I'm getting. So, my, Jim, my my leading question, my leading question, is, um, hang on, um, is what can we do as individual citizens? Um, maybe even more than as a as the access advisory committee to move, to move this forward. You know, we're having a lot of discussion about yeah, there's lack of enforcement, basic I'll, enforcement. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one thing: this should have never been put in the hands of downtown parking to manage. They no. have completely mismanaged this, and it I was predictable. It was predictable. This needs to be moved. To, to the building department for enforcement and, and regulation immediately. And, and you know, this was considered a temporary thing that was ex was through December 2020, now it's been extended through March 2021. The point is, is that these outdoor dining areas are gonna be with us, they're not going away. And they need to be officially permitted and looked on um, to, to comply with code. And that's there's a review process that requires fees that gives the that gives the city finances to enforce. I mean, this is all, you know, where are they going to find the staff and the time to do that if they're not collecting fees for these things? So, this is something is that Brian is is it realistic to expect that we might get this? project this program moved out of downtown uh parkings purvey or at least partially overseen by the building department 
I would say that it, it's possible. I think with uh, if it does turn out to be a, a retirement that Victor's headed on, we'll, we'll have to rethink how we're managing this. I think we need to rethink it anyway. And uh, I think um, you know we have public works inspectors. There are also building inspectors available. Um, the public works inspectors are in public works departments, so that wouldn't be shifting the program uh, to another department. But uh, yeah, people who are used to being out uh, in the field reviewing uh, things to standards um, would be more in line with what public works inspection does or what building inspectors do. So yeah. we, we need to figure that out, but uh, that we have staff uh, who are used to doing that. And I think for uh, the downtown parking staff, I think that it's been difficult for them because they've been, you know, they've been used to doing, uh, well, I, I understand that, that downtown parking is it was not ever properly equipped to deal with this. I, I knew that nine months ago, ten months ago. I objected to it ten months ago. Yeah. How do we how do we, how do well, we fix well, that? I, I want to interrupt to say that right now they're concerned, especially with aesthetics, and so they're going to be policing colors very carefully, and I assume that if they can police colors, we can have our charts that show all the other items that they're policing along with the colors. That would be a poor assumption that they would be willing to do so. There, <laughs> there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a clear conflict of interest uh, and, and this needs to be rectified immediately. Listen, yeah. I, I recognize that you have uh, family waiting for you to go on vacation and I respect that and I, I wish you guys uh, a, a, a fa family fun time. I have some notes here I want to share before we run out of time. Um, so in, in um, looking into something positive to lead with and construction, constructive criticism, I have to admit that this is an aesthetically pleasing report. I'm happy to see that the city finally is providing some guidance on accessibility requirements. But the compliance spreadsheet, while visually stunning, is a work of comedic fiction. I had, had they not claimed 100% ADA compliance, I might not have been compelled to run out and audit the findings. 60% would have been a stretch in my opinion, but it would have been believable. In terms of constructive feedback, I'd like to suggest that in preparing reports like this, the city emphasize accuracy over aesthetics. Um, I found problems at all of the big names, Carlitos, The Chase, Sandbar, Holdren's, Joe's, and others are all encroaching well beyond six feet required path of travel. Saigon, Brazil Arts Cafe, Yona Reds, Cruisery, O'Malley's, and others had in-street dining with no ramp from the sidewalk, and their parklet was completely enclosed with ropes, fences, cables, or other barriers that would require assistance to gain access. I deeply resent having to police this situation. This is not my job, it is yours. The city has a legal obligation to enforce the building code, and this little game that the city plays to avoid doing so is beyond shameful. I'm troubled by the repeating pattern here. Four years ago, members of the public raised concerns to this committee about the apparent reduction of on-street ADA parking. The city, uh, the downtown parking group responded with a spreadsheet showing increases in the ADA parking, which I audited and found grossly inaccurate. Four years and many meetings later, we still see the removal of street uh, on street blue curbs with the exception of a few that were removed quote accidentally and replaced after complaints not one new blue curb has been added to my knowledge in that time i've heard from one contractor that downtown parking is allowing some flexibility and ramp slope due to the temporary nature of the parklets and that's not okay even a single day festival needs to accommodate accessibility Enforcement via the building department is critical. This has been completely mismanaged by downtown parking and that needs to change immediately. Before we adjourn, I want to point out to Mr. Diamore that I recently downloaded the city ADA grievance form and found it outdated and includes Mr. Wilshire's name and contact information as the ADA coordinator. Thank you, Nick. I think you should send the first part about the uh, checklist right to city council and also to Mr. Casey's office. Those are all valid concerns. I walked it yesterday and I know that every place you mentioned was one of the big problems. 
we can't just let this letter slide. Although I will say, Nick, that when you mentioned about building department should be in charge, they can't because this is public right away. This has, has to be a public works or a separate entity. But you can't just say, oh, the building department should, should do it. It might work out better because they have cast, but they really can't. But well, we, as Susan said, we have to have permits for this stuff. And I want, before I get off, Barbara mentioned the aesthetics part that if you read the, the report, it says that only happens once there's full indoor dining and then they're going to have to build their new ones or have them torn down. So until that time, which I don't know when that is, we're not even talking about the aesthetics part. We need tomorrow somebody to go out there and start writing tickets to city attorneys and saying Joe's is not accessible. Carlitos is not accessible. The chase is not accessible. This has to be done now. Brian, how long is your vacation? I'll be back on Monday and. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah, can, can we, can we, can we, we got to talk then. I mean, this especially with Victor leaving, that means no one's in charge. Yeah, well, okay. I was already imagining. Um, yeah, I, I probably know the standards as, as well as anyone within public works. Um, Okay. I wish I had more time, but this is important enough that I, it may be something that I just make the time for and say, you know what, uh, this can't wait. Um, I'm going to go, you know, it's okay. easy enough for me. I'm familiar with spreadsheets and guidelines and uh, I can. And you're our ADA compliance officer. And, yeah. and in, in speaking to time, um, I, I, as a volunteer, took on my lunch break. Mm -hmm. I, I, the information I gathered, the audit that I did took me less than one hour and it took me 15 minutes to write it down. So yeah. um, it's not a huge time commitment. It's a, it's a low priority by the city of Santa Barbara and it's disgraceful. And Brian, I'll be glad to talk to you Monday and I'll be glad to volunteer my time again or you can hire me as a consultant if you want, but I, we, I want to get this solved. Someone has to say these things cannot happen. And again, my last comment, you're getting free real estate to make money off of. Please follow the rules, okay? Or we'll close you down. Yeah, or you know, hey, you, you, uh, you probably know as well as I do raising kids, things don't, behavior doesn't change without consequences, right? And the city, could use, the city could use some some capital, right? So let's just start finding these guys. It'll change, and and it'll pay for your time or or whoever you need to hire to to be in charge of it. The ambassador. Uh, it, this is not <laughs> this is not rocket science. This is not a difficult thing to solve. Somebody just needs to own it and make it happen. And I, I appreciate you offering or suggesting that you might be that person. Um, that I'm hopeful that you might succeed as you at, at least feign empathy for the disabled. <laughs> I'd be glad to help you out, Brian. Hopefully we can talk on Monday. I'd be glad to meet you there or look at things or just discuss how we can do this. I think it's a, we could go on for hours, but Brian has to leave. And uh... Jim, I had a quick question for Brian yeah. just before we go. Is okay. are, are you Brian? Are you going to call a, a special meeting of our revolu resolutions uh, subcommittee in the next couple of weeks? What I'll do for that is send the draft of the resolution, and depending on the comments that we get back, if if the subcommittee wants to meet, we can meet, or we can just uh, exchange emails if it looks good. I'm, I'm thinking we'll probably want to have a meeting, but let's wait and see after people have had a chance okay. to look at that draft and digest it. Okay, so I, lo I look forward to receiving your draft. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for all your all your work with us. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for this. I think it's time to call for an adjournment. Thank you all. Don't, don't forget public Thank comments. You. Thanks, everybody. Public comments. Oh, yeah. Public comments, please. Mr. Chairman, I am looking and there are no public comments from Mr. Robertson. Thank you, everybody.
Sarita, thank, thank you. you for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Hey, hey, Suzanne, are you still there?